Hey guys, good evening. Welcome to episode number 61 of 10 Minute Kick-Ass Coaching, coming to you from my office in the evening. Um, I got a bunch of stuff done today. I was out working in the field in uh, Staten Island and had a few things to get done here. So I'm coming at you uh, a little bit late today, and actually I might be doing it for the next couple of days. It's going to be probably a little bit later on. So welcome, welcome. I appreciate having you here. Uh, today's episode, we're going to talk about when is it is it too dangerous to say to have all your eggs in one basket? Is it too dangerous to have a majority of your business relationships, majority of your business all wrapped up into one person? Um, is it too much to to rely that that person says to you, "Hey, uh, uh, I I can keep your calendar full, I can keep your book of business full, I can keep everything else full." Uh, but I need you to work exclusively with me. And is that okay to do or is that dangerous to do in a situation? Um, and I'm going to give you some examples of where it can be positives or where it can be negatives. Um, uh, from my personal experience, I had a relationship with somebody that was unbelievable. Uh, it gave me a ton of opportunities, and I'll, I'll, I'll know and thank him for the rest of my life uh, for what he did do and what he really brought to my company and so forth and so on. So I'm extremely appreciative of what was done. But that particular person asked me at one point in time to work exclusively with the company. He happened to be a person of influence in the area. And we'll be talking about person of influence and people of influence over the next couple of days. Um, in, the, in a particular segment that could offer my restoration company a ton of opportunities, a ton of work, a ton of uh, potential there. And uh, he wanted me to be exclusive to them. So if something came in that I could go and it was it was a large scale area that I'd be covering and, and again tremendous opportunities and I although I appreciated the time and I really said I'll do everything I can to keep maintain earn your business and earn it every single day and with every opportunity I couldn't commit to being just exclusive to them uh, and they may have hurt me a little bit uh, certainly probably affected me a little bit down the road when things changed out but um, that that uh, that person did move into another position and moved on to a different company of course things changed and we didn't see the return on work from that particular person uh, the mid change of senior management um, ended up affecting it and and uh, it, that relationship was pretty much uh, null and void at that point that manager had his people he wanted to work with just like uh, the person that I had the relationship with wanted to work with me so if I had made that decision to be exclusive just to him and his company and uh, those opportunities, I might have potentially gone out of business uh, because even though the opportunities were abound at the time when there was a change in management and this person had a better opportunity to work with a different company, he took it. I certainly wouldn't blame him. Um, he thought we'd be ingrained enough with the company that we would sustain those relationships. And unfortunately, we did not. The new person that came in had his people that he wanted to use. And again, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's business. And even though we didn't do anything wrong, um, we would have lost that and it would have severely affected our business. Now, that person was a major player in business referrals with us. I mean, lots and lots of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of referral relationships, still such as it is without even being exclusive. So it did work out very, very well for both of us. We were able to perform the tasks that they hired us for, be able to do what needed to get done and still maintain a relationship. We couldn't be exclusive. So when is it too dangerous to have all your eggs in one basket? Are you working or doing work with one particular company, one particular person? That person is feeding you the most of your opportunities. It's like an 80-20 rule. 80% of your business is coming in, and you're retaining 20% of it at the bottom line. Uh, but it's coming in from one or two sources. Is that dangerous to have that come in from one or two sources? Yes, it is. Uh, I'm not a big believer in it. Even though those, those opportunities come along sometimes once in a lifetime to do work, from a major uh, referral source that can really keep you busy and keep you going, uh, definitely does not mean that uh, they're going to sustain your business. So I believe in being diversified. In fact, one of the examples I did was I took that money that I that I made a portion of it, a good portion of it, and invested into local marketing and sales rep marketing program back there where I was involved into it. Again, working with this full time sales rep with our company and developing more local marketing referrals. So when the relationship had ended. Um, again, not any fault of ours, but it was a fault in change management. Um, I had plenty of work opportunities, local uh, business opportunities. Local opportunities are still going on for that business today, even though I sold it, uh, because we diversified and took those funds from that profit center and took a portion of it and rolled it into our local market. 
marketing programs and systems and uh, it paid off in the end it was a great thing but the beginning was scary you know when we lost that person of course that was a big chunk of our business but we made sure that we put things in place that'll keep everybody employed and it did it kept my workforce still going just as strong as ever um, right afterwards because we were able to uh, sustain that so never ever put all your eggs in one basket it's great to have that but you should be diversified you hear today people like Gary Vaynerchuk and other people talk about a side hustle it's always good to have a little side hustle I've got a couple of hustles that are going on at one time I'm still very involved in the business I helped build up in uh, New York and I'm obviously very involved into this and the coaching and consulting relationship so um, in order to do that you have to have multiple hustles going on and I believe in that I believe you should have a couple different things going on in your life if you possibly can if you've got a great job great opportunity then then that's awesome and if you have an opportunity to make some extra money to put that you could put away toward your retirement or something that's great too as well but putting your eggs in one basket as an entrepreneur is a very very scary thing and it's tempting a lot of people great get these tremendous opportunities I only want to work with you no matter what it's always you're the, you're the person but that doesn't mean that's going to be a great thing long term. The next best thing can come along and uh, you're gone. And it can be very dangerous to you to, to, uh, to sit there and think that that uh, would be a great thing long term. So my point of this is make sure you're diversified into many different things. If you're only offering one product, maybe you should offer a couple of products. Now, I'm not a big believer in being the master of everything as I talk about, master of nothing at the end of the day so you can't master all these different things you can't control all these different things but you have to make sure that you offer multiple opportunities and multiple streams of income I see in restaurants primarily they'll say we have four or five sometimes six or seven dining uh, options or revenue streams coming into the business you know catering is a big one uh, takeout is a big one uh, dining lunch sometimes breakfast is considered a, a, a uh, stream uh, it, it doesn't matter they're always having something else but they have multiple streams coming into the business it's not just we just do uh, sit down dinner and no catering or nothing else well you could do that and that's awesome but it, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna limit your possibilities and he, they may go to the next shiny object the next brightest thing and say hey um, you didn't offer this particular product so I went somewhere else and that's how it worked out when I started clean force one back in Pennsylvania originally the business was founded to be a carpet and upholstery cleaning tile cleaning I had came from the restoration field I had really no interest little to no interest in ever doing another flood damage job again because of the unpredictability you can't schedule your life it, it was rough it's a, it's a rough business there's no doubt anybody that's in it knows that especially if in any period of time and it can can eat you up um, but I didn't want it and I ended up referring other companies to go out and do the restoration work. I had the reputation as much as they would call me and say, hey, could you do this? And I'd say, no, I'm sorry. It's not really what I do anymore, uh, but I'll be glad to refer somebody over to you. And um, I did that, and that came back you know, a couple different times where people just were not happy with the level of service. They were getting a certain level of service with me that they were not getting with these uh, that I thought were fine companies they're referring to, but apparently they were not as fine in the customer's eyes as I thought they were. So at the end of the day, I said, you know what, I can't, I can't run my rep reputation in the ground. I might as well just start doing it. So I went out and bought a small package of dehumidifiers and fans and a couple of things. Just say, you know what, I'll just do these jobs for my current customers. And that'll be it. Hey, what the hell? <laughs> Go ahead and uh, make a few extra dollars and keep the customers happy. Well, over the period of years, that turned into something substantial, being one of Northeast Pennsylvania's larger restoration companies with uh, probably a hundred and plus pieces of equipment at any given time uh, available to go and do a job to a couple hundred pieces of equipment uh, be able to do it to do large loss and pretty much anything else so we made sure we diversified now I didn't plan on diversifying but once I got there I said you know we could do this we could do mold work um, we already know how to do it I had people on staff that could do it so we made sure there were multiple streams of income that were coming in um, from different opportunities we would have and I think that's really key that your business needs to make sure. Hey, Laura, how are you? You need, need your business really needs to make sure that you are uh, utilizing the most of your opportunities. And if you have all your eggs in one basket and it's all one center, it's very tough to utilize the most of your opportunities. So I do suggest that you make sure you have a side hustle if you're you're uh, if you're working for somebody else. I do recommend that you make sure that you're not getting most of your work from one particular uh, revenue source. If you're an entrepreneur or a manager or whatever, you should make sure you diversify yourself. You should never ever just really stick to one person. Again, you can really really love 
the relationship you're having. You can really love the fact that uh, that these people think so much of you that they only want you. <laughs> but the problem is, um, if they change their mind or something happens to them, or they move or they go out of business, you're done. You're out of business. Um, so make sure you diversify yourself. Make sure you do not put all your eggs in one basket. Make sure you've got eggs placed here, 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 sort of like an Easter egg hunt. So hey, Laura. So that's uh, that's uh, that's really um, what I wanted to cover tonight. Is make sure you're diversified. You don't keep all your eggs in one basket, and you make sure your opportunities are bound. So you're diversified. So not one occurrence or not one change is going to affect your bottom line, your business life. That you're going to uh, make sure that you maximize your opportunities just like a restaurant having multiple revenue streams you need to have multiple revenue streams and if all your eggs are in one basket that's going to be a creek not a stream and it's definitely not going to be a river and never ever going to be an ocean so um, think about that guys and i appreciate having you here tonight i know it's a later edition i'm probably going to start doing these more toward later in the evening anyway because this just works better and i can focus on my day getting everything else accomplished and then uh, spend time to prepare these things so don't keep all your eggs in one basket make sure you're diversified make sure uh, multiple people have opportunities for you and you're always opening new opportunities um, again even in the restoration field i market to new people um, every day and some people i just heard from somebody we hadn't heard from in almost four years almost since we started the business and I never stopped talking to them, and they have never really referred us, always given us their blessing, but never really referred the company uh, right in Staten Island. And uh, after, out of the blue on Saturday, they called us up, and I talked to the gentleman that runs the organization. They're a huge company, and I thanked him for the opportunity. He says, well, you've been in business long enough where now I believe uh, we can work together, and I know you're legit. So that's, that's making sure we keep ourselves diversified and not just one, not just saying we have 25 or 30 direct referral sources consistently and 50 indirect and under and, and whatever um, we make sure that we maximize it until somebody tells me to get lost i try to stay there and i'm not a pushy guy i drop off information talk about it and uh, if they're ready to purchase or ready to work with us then great but i've never been a pushy person i think that's been one of the reasons for success um, but uh, I always made sure we maximized those opportunities. We never said, hey, we've got 30 people. That's great. We don't need any more. You can never say that. You never know who's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. So uh, make sure you uh, embrace those opportunities. And, again, don't put all your eggs in one basket. All right. Have a great night. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate the compliment. Uh, I will see you real soon. So um, thanks so much, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.